Hey guys, and welcome to Achieve with Karadina Live. I'm Karadina Romanyuk, child and family sleep specialist and founder of Achieve with Karadina. I help parents to get a good night's sleep and to understand their children's sleep needs better. So tonight we're going to be talking about my toddler hates sleep. Mm -hmm. Big, big, big one. So... Let's wait a little. I'm seeing that we're getting some people signing on. Uh, hey, Masha. Thanks for joining. So, hold on. Let me just move all this stuff out of the way. I got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay. So, this is going to be a really, really cool video because um, I wrote something a while ago on a blog and um, kind of wanted to go through a little bit of more pointers with you guys on toddler sleep. So, hey Lana, so if you guys have any specific questions after I'm done chatting, feel free to comment. If you do know someone that ex is experiencing uh, really bad toddler sleep, feel free to highlight their name on here. Um, you can always share the video as well at the end if you like. And feel free to give me lots of likes and lots of love because that's always, always loved on my part. Love you guys. <laughs> so let me wait like a couple of more minutes. Hey, Pamela. I'm so thirsty. I actually made this really cool tea um, with ginger, lemon, and fresh mint and some honey. Hey, Floriana, and it tastes awesome. So it's in here. I've been drinking it all day. Cool. Okay, so we got a nice group tonight, and let's get started. So I'm going to kind of read a little story for you first um, to get the little, f to get the feeling going. And hey, Luba. And um, then we're going to go into the four common sleep crutches. I'm going to explain to you what crutches are, uh, kind of ways to solve them yourselves and uh, starting points. So tonight, hey, Alyssa, so tonight is going to be a really huge, huge video. Um, <laughs> Floriana, you just left the room quickly and quietly. Shh, I'll be quiet, okay? <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you guys ever watched um, The Golden Girls, but that's my favorite show. And I have found that usually my style of writing is um, interesting. I like to start it off with a storyline, um, kind of like a picture it. So if you ever watch The Golden Girls, my favorite character is Sophia and um, she always starts off with something as picture it and then the date and then whatever else happens right so that's kind of what we're going to be doing today and um, let me walk you over through the story about it so picture it little Ava four months old goes quietly down for bedtime in her crib an hour later she wakes and starts crying you enter right away, feed her and sing her a gentle lullaby while rocking her in while rocking in your luxurious cotton blend upholstered glider with your daughter's little perfect body in your arms, while gazing at her and memorizing every part of her, even the curvature of her perfect ears, you feel complete and wish that feeling will never ever end. Right? Now, we're going to fast forward a year to two years later. And little Ava is still being fed the same amount, being put to bed at the same time, sung, and rocked to sleep. Nothing has changed whatsoever since she was a newborn. The main difference now is that she's older and way, way bigger. Your focus and functionality level is, be is beginning to deplete because your lack of sleep from the amount of time you need to rock her has totally increased. So when she was younger, it only took you a couple of minutes. Now it can take you close to an hour to put her to bed because she's a toddler now. So instead of 10 minutes of rocking session right before bed, now it's more like 10 minutes of rocking, plus 10 minutes of bouncing, plus 10 minutes of singing a lullaby, plus another 10 minutes of finding her favorite cup with her certain straw, and then another 10 minutes of reading her a story. So you're kind of going all over the place, right? 
and you have now just exhausted all of your options and you don't know what to do. So you're at this point with your toddler that you are just exhausting everything and you're giving them everything that they want and they're still not going to bed. So going on with that part, since that's like the little storyline of how things might have kind of trickled and became to what they are right now. And usually what happens with toddlers is that when they're little, you do what you have to do to help them go to sleep. And then that just becomes a process and a way of, let me just call this, and a way of how they learn to put themselves down to bed, right? So they have came with um, certain patterns that started to link since they were little up until toddler age. And it's kind of hard because now their behavioral features are really ingrained and they're strong and you really don't know where to begin. Or you have tried a lot of things and you don't know what to, um, or how else to transition from certain stuff. So the four common sleep crutches that I wanted to go over tonight are um, the first one is falling asleep in your arms if you guys have questions feel free to jot them down and then i'll be able to answer them towards the end so the first one is falling asleep in your arms right that's the most common one is that you would hold your toddler in your arms either you're rocking them you're holding them or they just want to be maybe on your lap and you and you have to like pat them or give them a massage and that's how they kind of come comfort themselves and go to sleep right so one of the main things that you would want to do is put them down drowsy but awake. So I know you're thinking right now saying, Carolina, what do you mean drowsy but awake? Because if they are drowsy, that means when I put them down into their crib or I put them down into their bed, depending on how old they are, they're going to wake up right away and then they're going to start screaming and crying and all this other stuff, right? So what do I do? Easy. The reason why it's said to put them down drowsy but awake is because you don't want to fake your child to sleep. And what that means is that when you are placing them to bed, that you want them to be aware of their surroundings when they close their eyes. So the last thing that they have, the last memory that they have when their eyes close is the first expectation they have when their eyes open. Aha, makes sense, right? So think about it. If you're in your baby's room, in your toddler's room, right? And you're sitting there and then when they wake up in the middle of the night, you're not there because that's the last memory that they have. You know, they freak out, they start crying, they get scared. It's the same thing as if you fall asleep on the couch and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're hugging the toilet. You know, <laughs> you don't know how you got there. You don't know how you got to the bathroom. It's scary. So your environment has changed. When your child wakes up and their environment is not the same as it was when they went to sleep, they freak out and they just want that to be replicated. So it's not a you shouldn't think of it as oh my god why are they doing this to me or they're just trying to torture me you know any type of feelings like that it's really just that they're using what pattern has been instilled at that point so if you've been sitting by them or if you've been rocking them or if you've been helping them in some sort of a way to fall asleep that's what they expect and that's the only thing that they know is how to help them go to sleep so the second one, the second crutch, and what I mean by crutch is I mean an association, something that helps your little one fall asleep. It could be a prop or it could be yourself as being the human soothing person. Now, the second one is pacifier withdrawal. If you guys like everything that I'm telling you, please feel free to give me a like or give me a love and share this. You can share this right now by clicking the little share button below. And um, also you can highlight your friend's name on here too. If you know of someone that is struggling with toddler sleep. Angelica, you join late? No worries. So what we're just talking about, I'll catch you up, is we're talking about the four common sleep sleep crutches and those are associations that your child has when they fall asleep. Hey Larissa, thanks for joining also. And the first one that I was talking about was falling asleep in your arms and what you want to do is when that happens is to, hey Krupa, oh, thanks for loving the topic, I know it's a big one. So when your child falls asleep in your arms you want to put them down drowsy but awake. Um, I kind of went into in depth with that so if you guys are just 
tuning in and watching this make sure to watch the beginning as well so i go into more depth of about the drowsy get awake part because i know that does cause a little bit of confusion for people the second sleep crutch is pacifier withdrawal okay so this is a big one and that's why i did a couple of days ago i did a huge video on this alone hey justin oh you guys are saying hi to each other also cool so Pacifier withdrawal, it's uh, simple. There's different ways that you can eliminate from a pacifier. And I did go into that a couple of videos before. Now, the only way that you should really think about eliminating from a pacifier is if your child becomes so dependent on it that they can't sleep without it and you need to keep replugging them. If, like for example, if they keep losing it all the time, then you really need to get rid of it or if it starts to mess around with their palate and how their formation of um, their teeth are growing in too. But usually, you know, about like two years old, um, pacifiers are usually recommended even prior to that to be fully eliminated. So a couple of ways that you can kind of eliminate that is one, you can do cold turkey. Two is um, I gave a really creative way that for an example, you can go to um, the zoo that was one really cool one that a couple of parents liked. And you would tell your little one prior, oh my God, we're going to go to the zoo and they have little baby animals there that also need pacifiers. And explain to them, you know, the importance of sharing and that they are big enough and that they don't need a pacifier anymore. And then ask them because toddlers love to be asked and they love to be in control. So if you ask them, is it okay if maybe you can give your pacifier now because you're a big girl, you're a big boy, to the baby elephant, you know, one of the animals, a baby mon monkey or something like that. And then you would go to the zoo and you would find one of the keepers and then you would tell them, okay, my child wants to swap this. So would you mind if he just go with the flow and would you mind if my little one gave you their pacifier because we're trying to get rid of it. And usually that works wonders and then you never hear anything else about it after again. So that's one creative aspect. The other one is I've had some parents that put like mustard on um, the pacifier and then they wiped it clean so it just still had that nasty flavor of it. And then that's it, they never had it again. So, you know, there are a couple of ways, but when you're getting rid of the pacifier, yeah, it's kind of annoying of crying in tantrums the first couple of days, but then afterwards it's forgotten and that's it, nothing more. So you just have to kind of deal with that little time frame. The third sleep crutch is constant movement. And that is like rocking, bouncing, or strollerizing. <laughs> so I call it strollerizing because we would put our little one, at this point they're not little, they're a toddler in a stroller, and that's how they would want to fall asleep with motion. So if you need constant movement, constant motion for your little one to fall asleep, it's really hard for um, them to go to bed without that movement. So there are a couple of ways that you could do it. I usually don't recommend cold turkey for toddlers because I just really don't recommend cold turkey when you're trying to get rid of motion because that's what helps them go to sleep. So then what you're going to expect is a lot, a lot of tantrums and protests during that time. So if your little one is being needed to be rocked, to be bounced, to be, um, you know, put in a stroller or anything else like that, what you would do is you can do a um, two things. There's one, it's uh, like a saying you could tell them. I don't really call it a mantra, but um, it's more as in a prep, a, prep, a, a pep talk <laughs> for your toddler, kind of. So you can tell them, for an example, today for nighttime, I will stay next to you until you fall asleep. Usually I hold and I rock you, but now I'm going to let you relax while I stay next to you. It's going to feel a little different, but mommy's going to be right there next to you. So you can say that and kind of, you know, enforce the calmness about it and use that as a nice way to let your child know that you acknowledge them feeling nervous when they want to go to sleep, but you are also telling them that they're that we're going to try something different. 
and we're going to see how your body reacts to it. But I'm going to be here every step of the way. And I'm going to be right next to you if you feel a little nervous. And tell them that this will feel a little different. And that's it. That's all you have to do. The other m techniques that you can use are, um, for example, if you have to hold them or if you have to rock them, is you want to move gradually from that pace. So usually from rocking, what you would do is you would just pat like the tush. And then after that, you would just stand in one place. And then after that, you would put them into the crib or into the bed, depending, you know, what sleeping arrangement that they have and then just work from there and then pick a method once you already get them into the crib to do that part but usually having the, doing a pep talk with them and preparing them for toddlers is really 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 important you need to tell them okay tonight we're going to do something a little different and make sure you say that but then you should tell them, but mommy or daddy, whoever is part of the process, is going to be there during the entire time. Usually, I hold you, or fill in the blank, usually I hold you, I rock you, I feed you before we go to sleep. Tonight, this is what we're going to try. And it will feel a little different for you. You might feel a little awkward, but don't worry. Mommy's going to be right here with you, and I'm going to guide you along the way. So continuing on make sure you guys like this video and you share it it's super important because i know this is a really important topic for a lot of people uh to continue on we have the fourth piece that i wanted to mention to you it's actually not a crutch but it's something really important and using certain words for your toddlers can mean different things so i've noticed throughout my practice is that when you use the word sleep for toddlers, not for babies, but for toddlers, they freak out just when you use that word because it sounds very demanding. It sounds, uh, it has like a negative connotation to it for toddlers because before you started sleep training, you most likely, and I know that we did this um, with my older one before I went through my whole <laughs> education process with this, is we would get pissed off and you would just yell at them and say, go to sleep. Why don't you go to sleep? Just go to sleep. And it doesn't work. Toddlers don't have on and off switches. It just doesn't work that way. So you need to really ease them into going to sleep. And sometimes that word can have a negative meaning towards it. And you don't want that to happen. You want sleep to be beautiful. So sometimes if you notice that your toddler is bugging out when you say the word sleep and they freak out and they start like tensing up and their body language starts showing you something else, don't use that word. Switch it for rest. Rest is better. Rest is less demanding. It's a little more gentler than the word sleep for some children. So that's really important to use that. Hey, Marietta. Hey, Ala. Thanks for joining, guys. We're getting a lot of people on. I'm so excited. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Feel free to share also. Like this video too. And just to do a little recap, what I was talking about before is um, the common sleep crutches for toddlers and why they are not sleeping and their solutions and the last part that i really wanted to go into hey ala finally you joined but towards the end oh man so the last part that i wanted to mention about the toddler sleep is using the word sleep and that's just like a little recap of what i was just talking about so not to try and use that word because again it can mean for lots of kids oh my god i gotta go to sleep fear of missing out of something right FOMO fear of missing out so that would have a negative connotation towards it and you don't want that you want as much positive vibes towards sleep as possible and that also includes you so being the parent how you are reacting towards sleep training how you are reacting towards sleep is how your child is going to react towards it if you start getting anxiety, if you start freaking out, if you start going, oh my God, I can't believe freaking I have to go put them to bed now. If you start reacting like that, guess how they're going to react? Oh, mom has put me to bed again and now I get to fight all over again. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to be easy peasy. We want it to flow nicely. We don't want it to be a have to kind of a thing we want it to be as in 
I get to do this. I get to spend time with my toddler to put them to sleep. It should be a beautiful process. It should not feel strenuous for you under any circumstances on that. So how you feel going into sleep training also is very important and that's how your child will react the same way. So if you're tensed up, they're gonna be really tensed up. And one cool thing is if you start to notice yourself freaking out about it, one thing that you can do is just to take a couple of deep breaths and just go, you know, take some time for yourself, leave the room if you need to, just take a couple of deep inhales and exhalations and just tell yourself it's fine, it's gonna be fine. This is all temporary, meaning the process of sleep training, not meaning just sleep of the process that you're going through right now. If you are sleep training, there's a certain way that you need to go through the whole process of it. And there is a whole plan towards going into that. Make sure that if you have any, if you do have any questions on how to go about that, please contact me. I have my calendar that's up on top and we can schedule a free sleep strategy session with you. So there's no way that you need to actually start figuring out things or testing out stuff. There's no need to do that. We'll work together to create a plan for you. And one thing that you can do tell your toddler, if, for an example, if they are getting a little bit nervous, besides that part that I was telling you earlier, is acknowledging them and validating what they are feeling. So if they are, for an example, if they tell you, I'm afraid of the dark, or I'm scared, or um, I need this, or I need that, or blah, blah, blah. You validate their feelings. Don't move them to the side. You acknowledge them. You tell them, okay, for an example, if they're afraid of the dark, I understand darkness, yeah, it is a little scary because you can't see anything, but there's nothing to really be, there's nothing to be afraid of. And then you can explain to them why there's nothing to be afraid of. Everyone sleeps beautifully when it is dark outside or when it's nighttime. And then you can maybe play shadow puppets with them to show them that there's nothing to be afraid of the dark with. So validating it and making it, um, and making them feel as though they are a person and that they mean something and that you acknowledge them as being a part of the family and a part of you know the sleep process is really really important to do that so that's um, what I want to talk to you guys about today let me see what questions you have because I saw that we got a bunch going on Luba says, your daughter is two and a half and she wakes up in the middle of the night two to three times either to drink. We went from bottle to sippy cup. So I would, um, or she just asked for the iPad. Okay. First of all, Luba, no iPad, <laughs> no electronics in the middle of the night. That's just a no go right away. And um, the second part is the intake of the water. I'm wondering if she's drinking a lot and that she's also requesting to go to the bathroom often. If that is a reason, then I would eliminate the water and the drinking content. The other reason that she might be asking for that is because she knows that you will come into her room. So what you can do is you can give her the bottle, leave it by her bedside, and tell her that she can drink it herself. Now here's the thing, is that if you do that, she most likely will not reach for it and she would still call you to ask you to reach for it. My kid, sometimes the bottle, like his sippy cup, would literally be at an arm's reach, like this. Like here, here it is, and here he is, right? All he has to do is this. That's it, just pick it up. No, he wouldn't do that. He'd yell out mama from across the room, because uh, it's too much, he can't reach it, he can't reach it. Toddlers, please. Oh man, they're like another species on their own. But that can be a possibility in what's gonna happen. So what I want you to do, Luba, is play a game with her during the day. Put her in her bed, tell her to show you how she sleeps, and then ask her to show you how she reaches out for her cup or for her drink. This is if she's in a toddler bed. 
if she's in a crib, you can do the same exact thing, is you can place her little sippy cup or her cup in her crib and have her drink it whenever she wants and make sure that during the day you practice it with her, make it like a game. Have her show you how she does it and then acknowledge her, validate it. Make it a big thing. Yay, you can do this. Now let's see if you could do this at nighttime. Guys, remember, nighttime is a reflection of daytime not only sleep but daytime activities if you are all over your child all over your toddler hugging them and giving them everything and being there for them and then at night you expect not to be there at all that's not gonna work you haven't given them any time during the day to be independent why are you going to want them to be so independent at night you they they bal they need to be balanced they need to be together and if you want them to be independent sleepers at night, you have to give them some sort of independence during the day as well. Oh my God, we are getting so many, so many viewers. I'm so excited. I think this is the most that we've had in a while. So please, please share this. Just right below, click the little share button. It'll take you literally one second to do that or tag a friend that you know that has um, a toddler or is having this problem with sleep. Thank you guys so much. Luba, I hope that answered your question. Uh, hey, Angelica. I think I said hi already. I don't know if I did. Um, let's see. Who else? Krupa. You said, this is my son's problem. He only sleeps in his swing, and then I put him in his crib, and then he sleeps throughout the night. Uh, Krupa, how old is your son? And... Um, he only sleeps in the swing and then I put him in the crib and then he sleeps throughout the night. That's fine if he does that at a young age. I think, I don't think your child is a toddler because I don't think that he would fit in the swing. <laughs> um, but if he, since I'm assuming that he's a, a, an infant, that um, once you get towards, the, usually by four months, I don't know how old your little one is, but past that time, it will become more as an ingrained habit for him so you will kind of want to wean away from the whole swing aspect and the motion for him to be needed to go to sleep on that part ah uh, thanks Marietta I don't know if you live um, she's asking about where my necklace is from I actually got it today uh, I will give you the name of it I can't remember it's on Kings Highway if you live in Brooklyn uh, Ruby something I can't remember the name of it, but I will write it down for you uh, afterwards. But thank you. I know. I love it so much. I, li I like shiny things. <laughs> uh, let's see. Allah, you're going to have to watch the whole thing because I said a lot of stuff. And uh, the videos are on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 10 p.m. sharp. So sign on on those times. Uh, Luba, okay, she's in a regular bed. Um, okay, so that's good. In a toddler bed. She's in daycare. I don't know what goes on uh, in the daytime. So during daycare and then when she's at home are two totally different aspects because during daycare, they usually follow what the other toddlers do. And it's kind of, um, you know, like a like a play-by-play. -play. But when you're home, she has a different environment. So in daycare, she's one child. And then at home, she's another. So you have to instill proper... Uh, behavioral features for sleep at home and not just follow what's going on during the day in daycare I hope that that makes sense so test it out on how the, the tips that I gave you Luba on what to do for um, sleep with the bottle and stuff like that have her play it out with you make it like a game and see how that goes if it doesn't go anywhere then you got to cut it out full-blown and um, also check in how her uh, bladder control is because she must be going she should be going to the bathroom often if she's drinking that much during the night time and if she is and that breaks down into her consolidated sleep and we need to get rid of that but if she is genuinely thirsty for a while I would also want to make that clear to your pediatrician just in case okay uh, next is um, Ala your son is in daycare also and refuses to go to sleep in his own bed um, so one thing that I would want to find out, Allah, is what is the schedule for your little one? Because if he refuses to go to sleep in his own bed, there could be there are several reasons for that. 
One is it could be too late. Two is um, you are probably not having a proper wind down time for uh, the home right before he goes to sleep. So he's probably watching cartoons right before, maybe like a half an hour before, and you're kind of rushing to get to bedtime. That might be a possibility what you're doing. But let me know if I'm wrong uh, because I'm just giving a generalized case from what I get from a lot of parents and what happens. So the first thing that you would need to do is Create a strict plan for yourself. Create a wind down routine for yourself. A routine that you can do easily every day on a consistent basis. Toddlers need and they thrive off consistency and that they know what's gonna happen on next. Uh, what's gonna happen next. So if you tell your toddler, oh my God, our routine from now on is going to be a little different and then this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna read a book, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a bath, we're gonna read a book, we're gonna, um, you know, have a bottle and then we're gonna sing and then we're gonna go to bed. Five pieces. You could even make short, it could just be three. I just kind of came up that off the top of my head. And um, repeat that every day. And then have your toddler tell you, oh, what's next? What are we gonna do next? What, what, what is next in our sleep plan? And make that a big thing. It should be something interesting. It should be something fun and something that you feel and you get to do. So it shouldn't feel cumbersome or anything else like that. Hope that answers your question. Hey, Yolga, um, is there a sleep regression at two years old? Um, not, well, yeah, at 24 months there is, uh, but what's going on with you? It depends on the children and how intense your uh, sleep deprivation is at that age already. And if they don't have a sleep foundation, then we would need to look into something else in why your little one is going through this. Because a sleep regression at that age doesn't always phase a child. It, um, it can if they don't have the proper foundation set in place. And if they do, then I would want to know a little bit more about what's going on. Okay, wow, so your little one is almost 11 months old and still on a swing. Hmm, so that's, uh, you're going to have to get get rid of that swing and um, put your little one straight into the crib. I'm wondering if he needs to be held upright and be put in motion if he has silent reflux. That's usually a huge indication for me. So I would get that checked out. If you can put your little one straight into the crib, without like going like this, like back arching or anything else like that. And they don't cry a lot, like kind of in pain almost, or scrunch their feet up, then um, you're pretty good. So it's just an association that you have that they need to be rocked or they need some sort of motion to go to sleep. If they do those things that I mentioned to you, I would want you to talk to your pediatrician about the possibility of having silent reflux, okay? And keep me posted on it. You have, you guys have my calendar. Please, please feel free to use it. I made openings for all of you in my calendar. So feel free to schedule a free sleep strategy session with me. There's no reason why anybody on this thread should not be getting sleep. Cool? Okay, let's see what else. Um, Sigal, hi! Uh, what time should a three and a half year old's bedtime be? Um, and what time of what type of bedtime routine do you suggest? My son takes forever to finally go to to go to his room. Okay, so if you're a little if you're a toddler, um, by eight o'clock, uh, usually seven thirty eight is is fine. Uh, again, it depends on if they had any type of naps during the day, and um, if they did how were they? Uh, if they were too short, if they were really long, because if they're long, then that can cut into the nighttime sleep too. But usually on an average, anywhere between seven and eight, closer towards 7.30 and eight is a really, really good time. Uh, next, so the bedtime routine, it should just be something simple. It can be, you know, reading a book, um, looking at a photo album, you can do that. Baths are really nice. They start the process for sleep. So I would do a bath first. Um, then you can maybe read a book or you can look at pictures um, or maybe sing a song. You don't even, sometimes if you don't want to read a book, you can tell a story. By three and a half, your little one should be talking at that age. So um, 
depends on how verbal they are. Maybe they could tell you a story or you could tell them a story or talk about your day. That's really good to do that. The older that they are, past three years old, they're more verbal and talking about your day, talking about uh, what was your favorite part of the day? What did you learn today? Um, you know, things like that. Uh, let's see what else you could do. Um, for also what's really important, it's not even the routine. The routine can be anything. It can literally be you turn off the lights and give him a kiss goodnight and say sweet dreams. That could be a routine. As long as you do it the same day, same way, um, every day. What your main concern is, the fact that it takes him forever to fall asleep, is the timing and as well as the wind down time. He might need, if he doesn't take naps, he might need a lot of wind down time before bedtime. What that means is no electronics an hour before bedtime. I'm dead serious about this because any electronics, TV, an iPhone, a laptop, a computer, they emulate blue light and blue light minimizes your sleep hormone, which is melatonin, an hour after it is turned off, okay? So even if you are, let's say, sitting there reading a book and you yourself whip out your phone and you're like, oh my God, let me just check my email, you know, no biggie, he's not even paying attention, he's not even watching it, no, he is. He, your child will be glancing at your phone on and off. Even that small amount can play a significant difference in how they are waking up and um, in how that they are staying awake on that part. So we don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that you are using the proper tools to help your little one fall asleep. So no electronics. You want to use dim light. You can use a dimmer if you have one. And you want to create the perfect environment when they go into their room as well. So you don't want to go from a bright light room to a pitch black room. It doesn't work that way. Our bodies need to gradually be put into the process for sleep. And using your environment plays a huge role in that. So if you go from a really bright room into a pitch black room, that's gonna shock anyone's system. I mean, I don't think you do that unless you are so exhausted after you know pushing the limits of your sleep pressure that you don't really care if the lights are on or off. But for toddlers, it makes a huge difference. So I would play a huge, um, I would watch, I would play an emphasis on the importance of your environment and how you get your little one to sleep by using your environment as that aspect. So no TV or electronics an hour before bed, and make sure that when they're going from a dark room, from a light room to a dark room, that it gradually goes into that. So it means, for example, let's say you're in the living room and you're reading a book or something like that, and then you wanna go into the bedroom, you can use a night light and then play with a couple of toys and then start turning off the lights to do it that way. That's a gradual process that you can do that. I hope that answers your question, Sagal. And if you do have more, feel free to set up an appointment with me one-on-one. -on -one. It's a free sleep strategy session and we can talk more into depth on that so I can find out a little bit more about what's going on. But that's kind of like a starting point for you. Uh, Ali is saying bath at 8, 8.30 and in bed by 9 and he is still up. Sorry, uh, I didn't send it before I finished typing. That's really late, Ala. Uh, that's a no-go. 9 o'clock no-go. Um you really need to bump up that bedtime. So I'm wondering if you are working late, that that's why bedtime is at that time. If it's not, and you do come home a little bit earlier, I would highly, highly suggest to bump that bedtime early. Because what happens is if we miss our cue for sleep, our biological cue for sleep, you have to wait in close to 45 minutes to an hour until the next cycle goes up. Okay, and that's what's happening in this case for you. That when you start the process for sleep at eight o'clock, he only goes to sleep around nine, even nine thirty. And once that passes, the next time is like around ten, ten thirty. So we don't want we don't want that to happen. Okay, so it means that you gotta work on your on your timing, girl. That's what you gotta do, uh, Floriana. 
Um, my almost three-year-old naps in daycare, but then isn't tired at 8 p.m. She falls asleep around 9, 9.30 and wants me in the room until she's sleeping. She sleeps in a crib in my room, so I just have to lay on my bed until she's sleeping. She tries to brace every day and tell me I, uh, I can leave the room, but once I leave, she freaks out and it's hysterical. Then I come in and I wait until she's sleeping. Okay, so um, Floriana, there's a lot, lot going on here. First things first is um, finding out the nap times for your toddler. Two is creating a proper um, bedtime for your toddler. So she's probably way exhausted before eight o'clock and that's why it takes her close to an hour to fall asleep. That's one, that's two. The third thing is creating a routine for her and Fourth is acknowledging the fact that she's afraid of you. So make sure that you guys, if you're liking what I'm saying, like this video, share it again. Thank you so much for the love. Uh, but again, Floriana, do those four things. You need to acknowledge her and acknowledge the fact that, okay, her body gets a little nervous that when she has to go to sleep and tell her mommy's right here we're going to try something a little bit different tonight i'm going to stay with you until thank you so much guys oh i love this like a flood of hearts oh this is so cool so um tell her that mommy's right here i'm not going anywhere and if you just listen to your body and we will wait together until it tells you that it has to go to sleep just acknowledge her validate how she's feeling don't freak out don't tell her you know what go to sleep i'm gonna come back why don't you go to sleep that just stresses everybody out so don't do that just acknowledge and validate her feelings and then you'll notice that things will get a lot better and it'll become quicker once you do that okay and also um once she does fall asleep give her a kiss and then in the morning make sure that you tell her how wonderful she is and how wonderful the process was and that she listened remember to say this that she listened to her body it's important for children to understand their feelings and their emotions and especially at this age they don't know what's going on so we want to make sure that we are acknowledging their feelings and we're acknowledging the fact that they acknowledge uh, their own feelings hope that makes sense <laughs> okay let me know how that goes so I'm really, really interested, Floriana, in how that goes. And everyone else that I gave tips for, please, please message me, email me. I want to know how things are going out for you and if there's something else that we need to do. Oh, my God. This is like a whole little stream of hearts and likes. Oh, I love this. Ah, okay. <laughs> this is exciting. Uh, Krupa. So I just put my son directly into his crib today and he cried for 10 to 15 minutes and now he's sleeping. Okay, 10 to 15 minutes is totally cool. Um, if it's usually past that, like 20 to 30 minutes, then we know, okay, there's something going on with the sleep process. But if it's 10 to 15 minutes, it's usually normal. Sometimes kids just need to belt out and they need to... Um, release some sort like release excess energy and they would cry and that's how they would release their stress levels of that so I've had that happen in lots of cases no biggie if it starts to go past 15 minutes like 20 to 30 minutes then we know okay we got to look deeper and dive heavier into it and into what's going on um, okay let's see what time is it okay so a couple of more will do and then um, I got to get some sleep <laughs> okay, Sagal, uh, also my younger son is 16 months now. Um, he would sleep from 7 to 7. Past two weeks, he's been waking up at random times and crying. Sometimes falls asleep on his own and other asks for a bottle. What do I do? I think he might be teething. Can that be it? Yeah, he can be teething. Um, if it's out of the ordinary and why he's crying, I would... Uh, Keep a diary. There has to be a reason on why he's reacting this way. Um, 18 months is usually when separation anxiety peaks. It starts at around 16 to 17 months. So he's probably hitting the beginning part of that. Uh, the other factor is make sure that you keep a sleep diary and you see the times that he's sleeping. Thank you guys for all the love. This is so exciting. Uh, make sure that you keep a sleep diary for yourself, Sagal, and you see how the naps are. Maybe there's something has changed during that time frame when you are um, putting him to sleep. So 
see if there's any type of pattern that forms on that. But he is hitting into the separation anxiety part. Okay, let's see. Damn, this, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. Okay, hold on, let me take a sip of water. You guys are gonna make me cry with all of this love. Okay, Anita. Uh, let's see, uh, my daughter is, hold on, let me open this up. My daughter is going to be three soon and has always been a good sleeper. Lately when I give her a nap from 12 to 12, uh, 12 to 12, oh my, <laughs> from 12 to 2, see how exhausted I am? <laughs> from 12 to 2, it takes her uh, three hours to go to sleep at night. Wow, without the nap, she goes right to sleep. Is she getting too old for a nap? She does get cranky without it. No, she's not getting too old for a nap. My six-year-old still takes naps. So three is still good. What I would do is I would um, cap her nap if it takes her that long. You need to balance off sleep. So if it takes her three hours to sleep, you I, I think you mean to get her to sleep at night? Is that is that what you're trying to say? So if it does take her a long time, I would need to see a diary from you. Send me one. And then we, um, and how about this, Anita? Schedule a call with me. Send me a diary. We're going to go through it together because there's a couple of things here that I'm not quite understanding and I want to know a little bit more. So let's schedule a free sleep strategy session with me so I can get a better understanding in what this three hour business is because it should not be taking you three hours to put your toddler to sleep whatsoever, okay? So just schedule something with me. My calendar is right up on top and let's get this figured out together. Hey, Patricia, that's my niece. <laughs> uh, Allah, what time should I start bath? Okay, so baths are the beginning process for sleep. Baths have a time limit on them. You have approximately 45 minute window until baths finish to put your baby to sleep. Okay, so you begin a half an hour before uh, bedtime. Bedtime routine should not be long it should not be strenuous it should not be oh my gosh i gotta do this again and ripping your hair out no it should be easy peasy okay so bath quick rinse don't give them a whole spa thingamajig it should be relaxing yes but it shouldn't be an hour okay they're not us they're not adults that we need to soak up and just absorb everything quick clean Good to go, put uh, put uh, PJs on, diapers, and off to bed. And do your little mini routine. Don't think too much about it. Routines, they place such huge em emphasis on it. They gotta do bath, book, bottle, boob, bed, whatever it is. It's, it's just, literally it can be, yeah, he takes a five minute shower, perfect. That's totally fine. Um, it can be anything, f you know, from just putting your baby into their crib, singing them a song or saying sweet dreams i love you if you do prayers you can do a prayer anything like that and just say good night and turn lights off and, and go leave that can be a bedtime routine bottom line is is your routine has to be the same every day and you should tell your toddler what you're doing before you do that so for an example you're going to read a book you tell them you're going to read one book not five not three not six, you read one book. After you read the book, let's say you sing a song. You sing one song. So you tell your toddler, I'm going to read one book, I'm going to sing one song, and then I'm going to give you a kiss and say sweet dreams, and then we're going to wait for your body to rest and try and fall asleep. And we'll do this together. That's it. Call it a night, easy peasy. Don't make this too intense for you guys, okay? You're, you're really thinking into this and it shouldn't be that hard. Um, Anita says she lays in her bed and talks and plays in her bed from 7 to 10 p.m. Okay, so that means that she's getting way, way too much sleep during the day if it takes her that long to fall asleep at night. So we would need to play around with the naps. If after a certain part in time, you are noticing in your sleep diary, okay, I've capped naps and she's still having all this weird 
length of time that it's taking her forever to fall asleep and it's not working out, then I would eliminate the naps uh, and increase bedtime really, really early. Either way, you gotta call me and we gotta, we gotta put this together. Thank you so much everyone for all this love. Make sure you tag someone that you know that has a toddler on here and um, share this video too, right below. Takes one second. Gotta get my nails done. <laughs> uh, Alice says, I'll, um... okay, cool. I'll be waiting for your message. Uh, and Angelica, do, uh, do I have to give him a bath right before bedtime? or before dinner is okay. I would do it before bedtime because bath starts the process for um, for bed, for bed to go to sleep. So once you are done with bath, straight into the bedroom. You don't wanna have bath and then have dinner and then take them out of that environment. The reason why is because bath begins the process for sleep. Now let me explain to you two minutes why it begins the process for sleep and then we got to go people. We got to go to sleep. You got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> and I have a really early morning wake up. So bath is super important because uh, he goes to bed fine. I was just wondering. Yeah. So, um, but I want to tell everybody else why bath is so important. Should I give a bottle after bath? Yeah, you, you totally can, Krupa. You can do a bottle after bath. Uh, because bath, what happens is, is when you take the clothes off, your cortisol level increases, right? That's your stress level because you're, nice, you're, you're cold, you're chilly. Once you go into a lukewarm bath, your cortisol drops, your melatonin raises, which is your sleep hormone, it's your relaxing hormone. That's when you're in the tub. Once you get out of the tub, and it has to be a lukewarm bath, a hot bath, you can't do that for toddlers and for adults if you have a hot bath, it raises your cortisol levels also. So you don't want that to happen either. And then the second thing is once you get taken out of the bath, you're cold again, like you're chilly, your cortisol increases, your melatonin drops. Once you get dressed warm, you do the massage, your body temperature increases again, that's your melatonin, and your cortisol drops. So that's the last thing that you want, is you wanna have your melatonin up in the air at its highest peak, and that's why it takes that time frame, approximately 45 minutes, um, usually, like uh, that's what I've seen, for a child to go from what from tired to wired, then so making sure that right after the bath, you're putting them straight into their bedroom and you're not going around the house or the apartment and trying to entertain them in any other way. It literally starts the process for bed, and that's your beginning to go straight into sleep time. So, uh, ah, thank you, my pleasure, Koopa. So we're done with the video and guys make sure to schedule something with me there should be not one person on this thread that is not experiencing sleep and I want you to schedule a free sleep strategy session with me use the calendar feel free again to share this video and to include or highlight anyone's name that you know that has a toddler right now or is experiencing the same thing sweet dreams good night Alice sweet dreams everyone love you Mwah. And see you next week. If you have any specific topics you want me to talk about, you can either email me at itsme at achievewithkaralina.com or private message me. Or you can include it on here too if you have a specific topic that you want me to talk about. Okay, sweet dreams everyone. And I love the love. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye.